British took out of India in value terms. And a very calculated math ended up put a number of $45 trillion at least. So that should give you a sense of really what happened in those uh, 200 years. The Natraj sculpture of the Chola period, the idol of Ma Annapurna, the terracotta figure of Yakshi of Tamluk, the statue of Maisha Surmardini, and the decorated sword of Guru Hargobind Singh Ji were among the 240 artifacts that were displayed at the recently inaugurated International Museum Expo at Pragati Medan, New Delhi. These are a part of the innumerable Indian aesthetics that were stolen from India but have been retrieved back in the past few years all thanks to the soft power diplomacy of our incumbent Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Let us take you through the journey of the rich cultural treasure of India, which was plundered and stolen and now resides as a so-called proud possession across the top museums of the world. Hello and welcome, I am Shreya and you are watching the pamphlet. First, let us know what are antiquities. So, as per the Antiquities and Art Treasures Act of 1972, antiquities include a coin, sculpture, painting, epigraph, a work of art or an object of historical importance that has been in existence for not less than 100 years. An antiquity can also be a manuscript, record or a document of historical, literary or aesthetic value of not less than 75 years old. Going back 100 years in the past, Portuguese, Danes, French and British came to India with the motive of trading spices, cotton and other valuable items. But they ultimately devastated the Indian treasury, leading to the economic drain of the country's wealth. The plundering does not stop here. The major destruction began after the traces of our cultural legacy were looted or illegally removed by smugglers in the past 75 years for their monetary gains. The most talked about name in the list of the antiquity smugglers was that of the owner of Manhattan's Art of the Past Gallery, Subhash Kapoor. He is currently serving a 10-year jail term in Tamil Nadu prison. Some of the highly unique and rich pieces of his stolen artifacts includes a stone-made bust of the god of love Kamdev, that is a rare survivor from the second half of the 8th century from Jammu and Kashmir, a sandstone figure of god Danda and goddess Niksubha belonging to the 11th century. Ivory made 2nd to 1st century BC old moon god Chandra in his chariot with wife and attendant, belonging to Shunga dynasty from West Bengal. A bronze statue of the god Revanth returning from a hunt, belonging to the 10th century of the later Chalukyan period from Karnataka or Andhra Pradesh. The painting of the goddess Durga, killing Mahishasur from Mewar, Rajasthan. All these antiquities and many such more are worth millions of dollars which have been housed in the auction houses and museums around the world. These warehouses of loot and Indian treasures have been displaying a sacred aesthetics in an unethical manner without even giving a second thought about it. The well-renowned and the largest art museum of America, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, commonly known as the Met, has claimed to possess 77 Indian antiquities through illegal means. This has been alleged in an investigative report by the Indian Express. Earlier this month, the museum's director, Max Holine, issued a statement stating that the illegally occupied Indian aesthetic works have been returned back to India. Among the valuables are an 11th century sandstone sculpture of an Apsara from Madhya Pradesh, which is worth a million dollars a 1st century BC Yakshi terracotta from West Bengal, a bronze sculpture of God Revanth, 11th century copper alloy ideal of child Saint Sambandar of Chola period from Tamil Nadu, a metal sculpture of Shwetambar in throne Jina, ivory panel with Krishna and Gopis, a metal parikar or back plate and some ceramic pots. Next looted warehouse is Christie's, a British auction house, which calls itself a world-leading art and luxury business. During the Asia Art Week in London in 2016, Homeland Security raided and seized stolen antiquities from Christie's that had its origins in India. These included a 8th century sandstone panel depicting an equestrian deity Revanth, a 10th century sandstone stele of Rishabhnath, 
Another one is the British founded American MNC Sotheby's, which is one of the world's largest brokers of fine and decorative art and collectibles. The arrest of antiquities trader Waman Ghia in 2003 surfaced links of how the Indian aesthetic valuables were sold and smuggled to Sotheby's auction house for monetary gains. Among the stolen artifacts were a 12th century redstone figure of a jina from Vilasgar temple, Khajuraho pieces of worth rupees 6 crore. Paintings by old masters worth a crore rupees. The most disgraceful fact about these well-known museums and auction houses is how easily these reputed places turn the blind eye on the original source and illegal method of transportation of these artifacts. This brings us to question as to why did these people steal a valuable artifact in the very first place. Let us take some inputs on this aspect from a well-known author, writer and speaker, Sandeep Balakrishna, who recently had a discussion with one of her own colleagues, Sumati Maharishi, on Ramayana and Indian aesthetics. Why did these people steal these artwork? For us, it is an item, element of you know, piety. Hmm. It is our it is a par, extension of our being. It, yes. It is an ex, forms of uh, being, expression, right? So, the colonials who came here and stole that, for them it was an idol, which their doctrine ideally tells them to destroy. Yes. The Portuguese, the Portuguese were the most faithful in that they destroyed our temples and idols. Hmm. The colonial British, at best, perhaps they were ambivalent to it, but they saw that this has a commercial value. Hmm. So, the word antique, which is used to, you know, commonly denote these things, stolen art or whatever, right? The word antique itself is derogatory. It is. It When what you have is not an idol of Hanuman. It is not an antique, for God's sake, for Hanuman's sake. <laughs> How can it be an antique? Antique means something that is, uh, you know, dated. It has no life. It is inert. At best, what value does it have? It has monetary value. From the past 75 years, the well-planned and systematic plundering of the valuable Indian arts and artifacts had made the task of reclamation a tough one. As reported, since independence, only 20 stolen artifacts have been reclaimed back into India. But looking at the numbers of past nine years, about 240 artifacts have been brought back by our incumbent government, along with the efforts of some private players. An intention and imagination to identify and rejuvenate made the reclamation task a success. Also, the soft power diplomatic relations of our current Prime Minister has played a greater role in bringing back the lost treasures of India. In the saga of cultural restitution last year in March, 29 antiquities were repatriated to India by Australia, which included ideals of Shiva and his disciples, worshipping Shakti, Lord Vishnu and his forms, Jain traditions and portraits and decorative objects. In 2021, PM was credited to successfully bring back 157 Indian artifacts from US, which included a red sandstone seated Buddha, bronze standing Buddha and other valuables. In 2015, the then German Chancellor Angela Merkel returned a 10th century Durga idol to PM Modi, which has been missing from a temple in Kashmir for over two decades. Not only the government, but also some private groups like the Art Enthusiasts of India Pride Project have made some diligent global efforts to track and reinstate India's stolen heritage by using archival material, social media and advocacy to identify stolen antiquities. IPP has helped in restoring hundreds of these aesthetics, including 3rd century limestone artifact from the ruined stupas in Andhra Pradesh, Nagarjun Konda that was handed over from Brussels in 2022. A 500-year-old bronze Hanuman idol that was stolen from Tamil Nadu, 1,200-year-old Buddha idol from Bihar that was resurfaced in Italy, 14 works of art from the National Gallery of Australia, 10th-century Goathead Yogini statue from UK, and it even includes the recent repatriation of 16 stolen artifacts from Met. Now let us know about the main player who is behind the task of certifying the Indian antiquities. 
It is the Archaeological Survey of India, which is the nodal agency to retrieve the stolen and illegally exported antiquities. Any person who owns or possesses antiquity needs to register under ASI, which will give it a legal tag. As the possession of an unregistered antiquity is a punishable offence under law. Also, the Antiquities and Art Treasures Act of 1972 prohibits export of antiquity by anyone other than centre or its agencies. To confirm the origins of stolen Indian antiquities, a procedure has to be followed, which involves establishing ownership, presenting evidence of ownership, and working with international conventions and organisations to facilitate their return. The stolen artifacts once retrieved back to India have to be carefully preserved in order to restore back a stolen cultural heritage. As per the then ASI director and spokesperson Dr. Vasant Kumar, these antiquities either return to the state concerned from where they were stolen or are displayed in the gallery of Purana Kila. This gallery holds a treasure trove of artifacts which were either seized during smuggling or were returned to India by foreign governments. These aesthetic valuables glorify India's pride and sanctity. The cultural revival by retrieving back these stolen Indian aesthetics is a significant step by our incumbent government to educate the young generations about the value of India's rich heritage. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel, The Pamphlet.